Welcome back to Press Review. Let's start by taking a look at today's front pages in the Middle East. From the Lebanese capital Beirut, the Daily Star leads reporting that Lebanese forces leader Samir Jaja has warned against obstructing the presidential election and urged all parties to attend parliament's session to vote for a new head of state. The paper also reports that Lebanon's military investigative judge Fadi Sawan has requested the death penalty for 32 suspects allegedly involved in clashes in Tripoli. The Egypt Independent is reporting that Cairo Criminal Court is to resume the trial of deposed President Mohamed Morsi and other 34 Muslim Brotherhood members over charges of spying for foreign authorities. The paper also reports Suez uh, misdemeanor court Suez has sentenced 17 Muslim Brotherhood supporters to three years in prison and acquitted seven others, including doctors, of joining demonstrations, inciting violence and destroying public property. Israel's Jerusalem Post reports that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu left the Fatah Hamas Pact aside in a somber speech marking the beginning of Holocaust Remembrance Day on Sunday evening and he urged world leaders to learn the lessons of the 1930s and when facing Iran, see reality as it is, not as how they would like it to be. The paper also reports that Netanyahu has stressed that Israel would not deal with the Palestinian government backed by Hamas even as the EU issued a statement supporting Palestinian reconciliation and unity. From the UAE, the Khalish Times uh, leads its front page reporting that US President Barack Obama has said US and Europe must join forces to impose sanctions on Russia to stop it destabilizing Ukraine, where armed pro-Russian separatists were for a third day holding eight international observers prisoner. It also reports that the UAE ranked number one in the world for treating women with respect, according to a report launched by the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council. From Saudi Arabia, the Arab News leads reporting that the death toll from the MERS virus has reached 102 in the kingdom, with 10 new deaths reported as authorities scrambled to reassure an increasingly edgy population. It also reports the top official has said that Saudi is studying ways to regulate locally produced YouTube content, including the possibility of requiring government-issued licenses for some users. And now let's take a look at the top Middle East news from UK papers. The Guardian leads Middle East News reporting that a judge in Egypt has sentenced to death 720 men, including the head of the Muslim Brotherhood in a pair of mass trials that were both completed after just two brief court sessions. The paper says lawyers and rights campaigners said the sentences in both court cases resulted from rushed proceedings that infringed basic local and international law. The Independent leads reporting that the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas has termed uh, the Holocaust the most heinous crime in the modern era and voiced sympathy for families of its victims. The paper says it marks a definitive break with tendencies in the Arab world to play down or deny the Nazi murder of 6 million Jews during the Second World War. The Telegraph leads Middle East News reporting that US Secretary of State John Kerry has said Israel risks evolving into an apartheid state if it fails to negotiate a two-state solution with the Palestinians to end the historic Jewish-Arab conflict. The paper says although Israeli officials have previously issued warnings about the dangers of a nascent apartheid-type arrangement, this is believed to be the first time a serving US official has used the term in an Israel context. And now let's take a look at the top Middle East stories in international papers. The LA Times leads Middle East News reporting that nine months after taking office, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani finds himself under pressure from both his reformist supporters and hardline conservatives as efforts to spur political change and economic progress have stumbled. The paper says the troubles are manifested by recent hike in gasoline prices and caused in part by international economic sanctions as negotiations over Iran's nuclear development program continue. China's Global Times sees reporting that at least six security members have been killed and 29 others wounded in attacks targeting polling centers in Iraq for early elections. The paper says a suicide bomber in a police uniform blew up his explosive vest among a crowd of policemen queuing to cast their ballots at a polling center in the western part of Baghdad, leaving two policemen killed and nine others wounded. 
And finally, Germany's Deutsche Welle leads its Middle East news uh, reporting that the health ministry in Riyadh on Sunday confirmed it had identified 16 more cases of the disease within a 24-hour period. In a statement on its website late in the evening, the ministry reported there had been eight deaths, taking the number of people who have died from the disease which uh, first emerged two years ago to 102. And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching Press Review. Be sure to join us again tomorrow and bye for now.